one of the things I like about next year is that there's some new movies coming out. And I'm kind of looking forward to the new movie schedule. You know, they finally, after, gosh, I think it was almost 30 years ago, but I think they're finally doing a remake of The Rapture. <laughs> you know, remember the old days? Some of those horrible, terrible, just some of the worst Christian movies ever imagined, made by Christians, that were so poor and so bad in quality that they scared the daylights at you because you thought they were real. <laughs> you know, about the rapture, you know, the oh, rapture? Well, that's kind of when Jesus comes back, you know, and there's a snatching away that some people are taken, you know, two shall be in the field, one shall be taken, the other left. Two shall be in bed together, and one shall be taken, the other left, you know. People talk about everybody going in a rapture, but they forget about the two people, one taken, the other left. Matter of fact, Larry Norman back in those days used to sing a song called I Wish They'd All Been Ready. He used to sing it like Life was filled with guns and wars, and everyone got trampled on the floor. I wish we'd all been ready. You see, everybody thinks they're ready now. Everybody talks a good story about being ready. In fact, everybody says, Hey, I'm ready. I'm getting out of here. Matter of fact, I got my act together. I'm doing my thing and I just can't wait to get home because Quite frankly, you know, I've already invested my 401k, and I've got my retirement, and, well, matter of fact, Jesus, how about you wait a while? How about you don't come back right away? How about you take your time? How about, Jesus, you just wait to return, because, after all, I wish we'd all been ready, but, no offense, Jesus, I'm not ready. As a matter of fact, I got news for you, Jesus. I don't really want you to return right now. I prefer if you took your time and you know the story. You've heard it, I'm sure. People are always telling you this story, aren't they? Aren't they always saying to you something about, well, if the Lord tarries? Yeah, I'll bet. I know, I keep hearing that story. If the Lord tarries, <laughs> dare I say, between you and I, Jesus ain't Tarian. As a matter of fact, it's scary in what people are talking about Tarian because the worse they talk about it and act like it, the more I know they will be left behind. Because you see, Jesus told an interesting parable. He was kind of like sitting on the banks of a river. You know, a lot like this one. You know, banks of a river. And he was kind of like telling a story that, you know, he felt was very important to his disciples. You know, and he was trying to make a, a point about, you know, how we needed to be ready because we do not know the day or the hour when the Son of Man returns. But he also told the story in such a way that he said, hey, guess what? There's water. There's earth. There's sky. Uh, you kind of know what clouds are all about, don't you? You know, clouds like in, uh, let's see, I think it's Amos. Doesn't it say that the clouds are the footprints of God? <gasps> Are they? Does it say that? Well, you might want to look that one up. Because, you see, one of the things that Jesus did that people forget is that they did a lot of talking and walking, but they didn't do a lot of writing and sitting down and having a Bible to examine. They talked about it. They considered it. As a matter of fact, they had to ponder the information. They didn't just get something that Jesus said, you know, and then sit down and go to their Google and Google it like I do. They didn't have the opportunity, you know, to kind of like uh, take a Bible, you know, and let's check out the Torah. <laughs> After all, you know, we got 60 or 70 different Torahs here, so we can do 70 or 20 or 80 or 100 commentaries. Let's figure out what it's all about, and let's kind of get our own conclusions. You see, they didn't really have that opportunity to come to their own conclusions. They had to deal with the information First hand. And you know, I kind of find that interesting because when you get it from the horse's mouth, it's kind of from the horse's mouth. I mean, that's pretty simple. Makes perfect sense to me. If it's from the horse's mouth, then the horse said it. That's kind of what I like. It's like, you know, if I'm going to buy a horse, I want to look in that horse's mouth before I buy it. I want to check out his shoes. I want to check out his girth. I want to check out, you know, his weight. I want to check out, you know, kind of some of his history. And that's kind of what, you know, Jesus was. People 
heard all kinds of things that he had to say. But you know, one of the things I do know, in his day, just like today, they didn't like what he had to say. They didn't want to hear that he was coming near or that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. They wanted to hear that, guess what? Oh, you're not going to get rid of the Romans? Then we're going to get rid of you. You're not going to set up your kingdom now? Then we don't want your kingdom. We want our kingdom. And you know, that's a lot like what it is today. Today we say Jesus is coming. And you know what? It falls on deaf ears. I know my own people that I know from the early days of the Jesus movement. Now I ask them, hey, remember when we used to say Jesus is coming soon? They're like, yeah, but you know, and I got kids, and I got my 401k, and I got my ministry, you know, I got my car, and I got my kids, you know, they're, they're grown up, you know, they're having children, and now I got my grandkids, you know what that's like, Jesus, we don't want to hear about that now, you know, that was back then, and you know, we didn't make a mistake, but if he tarries. Yeah, you know, you know, you, we, let's let's remember that. You remember, no man knows death hour. Yep, we better tell him about that. After all, we don't want to make a mistake here, so let's just go ahead and add that extra part. You know, that little four-letter words. You know, those little words extra to say if the Lord tarries. <laughs> Got news for you. Maranatha wasn't about hey saying or Hosanna when Jesus rode into the temple wasn't saying oh glorious Hosanna we're happy happy happy. Do you know what Hosanna means in Hebrew? Do you realize what the people were saying at that time when they were crying out, Hosanna? The word Hosanna is Hoshana. Or you could say Hoshana, meaning like, hey, let's put an emphasis on where it's supposed to be. Let's get down to the root example of what Hosanna means because, you know, a lot of Gentiles have been singing this Hosanna, you know, like happy, happy. Hoshana means save us now. Help. God help us. God save us now. That's what it means. It's in the imperative. It's like, oh no, we got to go. Get us out of here now. Save us now. Help. I mean, there's nothing really in English that compares because Hashanah is like, ah, get out of here. And so, sometimes people make up some really interesting songs called Hosanna. You know, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Or Hosanna to the highest. Hmm, might be a different meaning there, huh? Maybe somebody made a mistake along the way. And that's kind of what I want to know. Are you prepared to go? Are you really living as though you know that Jesus is coming in this generation? Or are you one of those who likes to say, well, nobody knows. I do. Or are you like one of those people that likes to say, you know, they've been saying since the fathers, you know, that Jesus was coming and after all, you know, even the Jesus movement didn't know when he was coming. I do. They like to say all kinds of things. You know, people like to babble. People like to create rabble. They like to raise up all these different ideas about what they want to do. Because, you know, they want to solve this year's politics. They want to, you know, check out and check in with, you know, the latest polls. And figure out what they can get away with and what they can do. Because, you see, if they knew that Jesus was coming... Puts a real crimp in your plans, doesn't it? Oh, well, then we've got the next step of what Jesus is coming said. You know, I mean, you know, let's, 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 let's not be too heavenly minded. We're no earthly good. You know, we got to keep it in perspective here. We're supposed to occupy, you know, we occupy the countryside. You know, we take over, take control. We rule. We take them, by golly, them people, those guys, and take over for them because, you know, we're the occupying force. Right. And Jesus said what? And Jesus did what? And Jesus was what? You see, I see a lot of things being done in the name of God, and I go, really? Really? Still? You mean, you haven't figured out what God is all about? That he's coming again? That he's coming for his church? That he's coming now, in this generation? You don't know that? You haven't figured that out? You don't know that Israel became a nation? And you're still thinking that somehow it's going to be 40 years from now? 100 years from now? You stupid? I mean, 
That's what I have to come to the conclusion. And I don't like to call anybody stupid, but you know what? When I see somebody standing out in the rain and saying, it's not going to rain, it's not going to rain, and they're getting soaked, uh, I call them stupid because, you know, the umbrella is standing right next to them, but they're not willing to grab the umbrella because, you see, if they open the umbrella, then they have to admit it's raining. But we don't want to admit that Jesus is coming because then we would have to get prepared. We would have to be ready. We would have to live like Jesus is coming soon. And we all know, not that he's coming, but if you look around, we all know people aren't ready for his coming. As a matter of fact, I can tell you for a fact, most of the people that are telling me to get ready for his coming, I can look at what they're doing and they are getting ready for his coming. They're ready to go build their ministry on the expectancy of his return, the imminency of his return, you know, the doctrine that teaches you to, well, you know, keep a light touch on the world. And yet they are so embroiled in the world. If Jesus said, come out now, walk outside the door, they couldn't even get up without grabbing their iPod, their phone, their cell phone, their cigarettes, their smokes, their drugs, their addiction, their kids, whatever it may be. Because you see, they found themselves no less than bound to the world, not found to be free. Jesus said an interesting thing when he was uh, leaving this place that we live in. He said, when the Son of Man returns in the glory of his kingdom, will he find faith? <laughs> Unless he kills me off. Yeah. Because, you know, I've been living my life every day, always expecting any time that I see a cloud in the sky, I'm ready to go by and by. You know, I'm sorry. But that's the way I live my life. If it's a forecast for clouds, I'm checking out, man. I'm ready to go. Because I don't want to know whether or not I missed by finding out I did. I want to be ready, looking expectantly to the soon return of Jesus. Because he said so. And because he said so, he gave me signs to look for them. And they are so. And he told me what I could watch for because he taught me himself what to watch for. And dare I say, you may be one of those signs just by the way you're living your life. But Jesus told me, hey, when you see people like that, guess what? You have your oil. You be ready for your master returns. They may have to go still find some oil. They may have to go study and try to argue about whether I'm coming back. But Jesus said, behold. And that means you got to get a handle on it. you got to figure it out and do some homework. But he said, behold, I come quickly. And I'm going to tell you, if you want to sit down and have a Bible study with me anytime, anywhere, any place, I'll beat you to death with how soon Jesus is coming. Because I'll tell you, you got less than five years left. And if it's ten years, he owes me an apology. That's how I'm putting my life together. 2013 is where I'm talking from right now. And you know what? Man, we get past 2017, you'll be lucky. Because the longest that anyone expects any time span to be, as far as the return of Jesus Christ, is either 2015, 2017, or 2022. And after that, mm -mm, I don't care what you do, because we ain't going to be here. It's over, buddy. <laughs> You're on your own. True story. So you know what? Some people think, you know, that means you're a wacko because you can know the times and the seasons. Some people think you're a wacko because Paul said that you have no need that any man write you. But we know that the day of the Lord is at hand. We know that there are even feasts that God will fulfill. And we're almost positive that he will do it during a seven to ten day period. Now, because he'll do it sometime during those seven days, guess what? You don't know the day or the hour when the Son of Man returns. And you know what's interesting is that there's even a Jewish holiday that says, this is the holiday that's called No Man Knoweth the Day or the Hour, because you don't. You have to go outside and look up into the sky in order to determine when that day starts or when that day ends. You have to see like two or three stars, you know. It's kind of like, it's kind of neat, you know. It's kind of like exciting to see that, you know, it's not like set down, you know, and you're looking at your wristwatch and saying, oh yeah, well, you know, of course it's now 12 o'clock, you know. And they say, well, you know, that's not the kind of time we're going by. You got to be standing, you know, in the streets of Jerusalem. You got to be on the walls of Jerusalem. You got to be kind of like looking up and looking out and looking over and saying, huh, kind of looks dark to me. I guess that means it's night. I mean, that makes perfect sense. Huh, there's a, a light in the sky. You know, it's kind of rising. I guess that kind of means it's dawn. That makes sense. You know, Jesus told his disciples, if you can tell that, 
How can you not know when the Son of Man is returning? How can you not know when Jesus is coming? How can you, O oh born-again Christian, not know you are the last generation? Oh, that thou wouldst rend the heavens and thou wouldst come down. Come on down, as the game show host. But the scriptures say, oh God, that you would tear the heavens apart. That you would come down to us now. Make haste, my beloved, and be thou like to a roe or to a young heart upon a mountain of spices. Come, Lord Jesus, come. We ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. O oh God, purchase that with which you have already paid the price. Bow thy heavens, O oh Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time, without sin, unto salvation. It shall be said in that day, Lo, whoa, wow, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him, we will be glad, and we will rejoice in his salvation. He which testifies these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Amen. O men, and amen, O men. Romain. <laughs> Even so come, Lord Jesus. That blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, our conversation is in heaven, because behold, heaven has come down and revealed the time 